Uh, we are so privileged to be in his house today. Let's pray for the word. Father, we just thank you right now for this moment. So do, we ask perfectly, God, that you present what your word declares to us today. God, I'm so grateful today to be able to just stand, just share what you've already given me in my personal time. And I ask that the remnants of this Bible study that resonate in a soul and a heart and a mind today. So God, I'm so grateful for every listening ear. I pray that they have an ear to hear what you, the Spirit of the Lord, has to say to us, to church today. God, I honor you for just giving us life, health, and strength. The activities of our limbs, the blood in our veins, the mindset to walk into this moment to receive from you. So God, we are so grateful and thankful for your word today. Why? Because it's your word that makes us new. Your word that teaches us about you. So make it clear and make it plain. In Jesus' name, would you shout like you love him? Amen. Amen. And give him one more praise. I like to praise him in between everything, everything. And so uh, real quickly, loud and proud, let me see them what? Amen. Real quick, like, let's do that Bible wave on this side. Let's go. Let's see what you got. I want to see what you're working with. There we go. All right, fellas. All right, ladies. All right, all right. We got, look at your neighbor. Say, there you go with your Bible toting self. What you there? Come in here. Come in here with your weapon out like that. Open carry. You can open carry this. Amen. This is 30 out 316. Amen. You can carry this everywhere. Amen. Some countries, this is prohibited, but we're grateful that we live in the land of the free, and we're so grateful. If you need a Bible, sign the ushers. They'll be more than delighted to serve you, and would y'all give them a hand as they readjust themselves and sit with their family. All right, just for a few moments, let's lock in. Let's lock in. Uh, all of those that's on security, y'all already know we lock into these moments and let them do their parts out there to keep us uh, safe while we secure our faith. And I thank God so much for our amazing ministries. I mean, from, uh, from the pulpit to the parking lot, it's, they serve with such um, diligence and love for God and his work here in this ministry. And so I want to continue this series. I want to just draw, draw fire, go higher, maybe retire, and talk about the series, More Jesus. Would you shout, More Jesus? And that's what we've been talking about. I, I know that some of us can live in our life in this existence and believe that we got enough, that what we do is sufficient and it, is, uh, it suffice for our, our personal satisfaction. But I want to encourage you and, and, and also just like rattle your cage a little bit to let you know that it's never enough. Until the day you see Christ Jesus or his return, you still have work to do. Somebody say amen. And I just want to let you know that because no matter how young you are or young-minded you are, there is still an opportunity for God to get so much out of you. I even declare for those that feel that they have reached a certain age that your ladder will even be greater because of your desire to know more about Jesus. Amen. Because every time I open up this book called the Bible, I learn a little bit more about him. Read it cover to cover a few times. And sometimes just reading it, you may not always get the full understanding of it until you may have a situation or maybe you're spending personal time in devotion. But every time you open up this Bible based upon your maturity and your own personal progressions in life, it begins to speak to you differently. And that's why I'm always enamored by how God presents himself in so many forms to build our faith. And so in this series, this is week number five, and we're going to be here for a minute because I can't, I know too much about him. You know, I'm reminded of my grandmother because she shared that saying with me all the time, no matter what life presented. And so every time I think about that, it, it brings about my greater desire to learn more about Jesus. And so today, I want to talk about something. I would love to center this message around the topic, a deeper relationship with Jesus. Would you shout with me, a deeper relationship with Jesus. Now, one of the sayings that I proclaim in prayer is that to make it clear and make it plain in Jesus' name. 
Because God has positioned me in the function of pastor to feed his sheep, not his giraffes. In other words, I, I desire to not be homiletically or apologetically advanced to the point where you walk out of here without understanding. Because the Bible declares in all you're getting, get understanding, right? Because what you understand, you keep. Because when there's a lack, lack of understanding, that's divine comprehension in your heart to repeat something on command. So when you can't repeat it on command, it's a sign that you did not understand. And so that's the goal of every encounter with Christ is to develop a deeper relationship with him. Now, um, like most of us here in the culture, we was most likely raised in church. Anybody was raised in church? Amen. And a lot of times we can relate back to church. I can say truly I was raised in church, but the church wasn't always in me. Amen. And growing up in church, I mean, being in church almost every day. You know, Sun, we, we had Saturday church. I was Pentecostal holiness, right? And so we had Saturday church. I, I'm Christian now. I'm just, that's all I am, just a Christian. I don't claim nothing else but Christian. Hey, I got out of denominationalism. I, I want relationship with Jesus. I'm a Christian. I'm a slave to you, God. That's what we are. Amen. No matter what religion background you come from, if you don't believe Jesus is the Christ, then you fall in the wrong way anyway. Amen. If you're fighting over who got the right place and the right cornerstone and not following Jesus, because he's the only person that can get you to God. And this is why we want more him, because that's when we experience a deeper and more under, a, a much more of an understanding of our God connection. And so as I grew up in church, going to church on Saturday, Sunday, we even had afternoon. Anybody remember Sunday afternoon? Y'all want me to bring that back? I can bring that back. Y'all ready for Sunday night service, 6 p.m.? Boy, hey amen. The 3 o'clock service, I mean, it was every. We did, and, and don't let nobody else is doing a revival. You know, that was on top of your church services. You just stayed there. Wednesday, Tuesday night Bible study, Wednesday night prayer meeting, Thursday night choir rehearsal. And I had a lot of church. And this is what included attending everybody else's stuff. And we had a lot of church. And as soon as I got old enough to do my own thing, I was out. I ain't going to lie to you. I was so far from Jesus. You probably didn't know I knew what a G. <laughs> and folks used to be running. When I was in the military. They used to, they used to, they used to um, come and say, man, it's something about you. I said, man, no, I ain't know what, what, what you're talking about. I used to run. Every time somebody wanted to talk about Jesus, I would, I would just get out of that prayer because I wanted to keep doing my thing. I knew that if I hear about them, something happened on the inside of me that will bring me back to that. You know, it'll bring you back to that place that you know that he is a part of your life. And I used to just, as soon as somebody started talking that, that stuff, I was going about my, hey, oh man, I got to do something. Play like I got, on, got to get on my phone or something. Because I knew the cognitive God would speak to me at some point and I understood that moment in life, and, and I can remember that, now I understood the more that just because I was in that thing frequently doesn't mean that my faith was being built. So it took me on one of my deployments. I lost my grandmother. Y'all know how I am about my grandma. I'm a grandmama's baby. And I lost my grandmother. This is my, this is my story a little bit, uh, just paraphrasing it. And I was living riotous. I mean, just to just, just say, I mean, you would go totally away. And I got a call one week into my deployment, and she had passed away. And man, when I talk about heartbroken, I couldn't even get back because I was missing essential. And, and um, they said, hey, you know, uh, even though she was your local parenthesis, um, the mission comes first. And I was so heartbroken. And, I, I, and in my sin, I can hear God say, if you ever want to be where she is. Because I'm not sure about seeing the gain stuff. I, I, I don't read that biblically a whole lot. I'm not here to bust anybody bubble on that, but I, as I read the Bible, it, it don't show me anywhere where I would see someone again. Because I, 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 I think that I would have trouble in that because, you know, how do you forget those that don't make it in? If, if, the, if the encounter is to, and so I heard, you, do you want to go where she is? 
So I'm, I, say, I say, I, I'm not here to, I know people say, I'll see you again. I don't, if your life won't change, you may not see where they are. And so I, that, that, they, they came to me and it's like, I, I was like, God, it was that moment, from that moment, and so now I understand that knowing Jesus is a lifelong pursuit that transforms our life every day that will one day lead us into eternity. And that's why our relationship with Jesus is so important and not just on the surface level, not just in our regular encounters, but to take these moments that we come corporately together and now develop private time with God. This is going to be important in our life because I want to share with you a process. I need y'all to shout with me, a process. Because these are ways to develop, and you may have your own way that you lock into God. And I figured that when I was out there doing whatever I was doing and I, I gave my heart to Jesus, and I, I can literally understand this perfectly now and the more, is that it wasn't about me just having knowledge of him, but I had to get to know him. And I told this, I, I shared this so many times throughout ministry, is that most people know Jesus like they know Jordan. They know his stats, they know a few scriptures, but cannot relate to him personally in an intimate relationship. And so many Christians, that every time they're going through, they need to include everybody else. Not that you shouldn't have people praying for you, but you should be able to go to God on your, that, that veil was ripped with Jesus. You no longer had to go to, I was sharing even this week on the Rock Roundup, how they had to tie bales and ropes around the priest to go beyond the bale. But if he wasn't right, he'll drop dead, they could hear the bells ringing, they could pull him out because you couldn't go beyond that. But Jesus gives us direct access to God. Like direct. We don't have to go to mama, grandmama, to abuela, tia. We can go to God ourselves, especially when we have a deeper relationship with him. And the enemy, let me tell you something, he knows where your relationship with God is. He knows how much time you spend in your word outside of here. You know, I was mess, the worship team was messing with me the other day because they, they, do, they do devotion. Um, and I, I, I didn't know this until recently, that every person on this worship team have to be prepared to lead devotion every Saturday. Like they could call on anybody to lead in word what they're worshiping about. And I didn't know, I was, I was messing with my daughter because she was over here, was, we was here Friday night doing some stuff in here. I like, what you write? She said, I got to get prepared. I said, I said, you doing it tomorrow? She said, no, but anybody can, it can be anybody. And I thought, I said, man, that's, and, 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 then, and, then, and, then, and then my other daughter over there, Kira, she, I think she liked my other daughter. And she was, and she came up and said, that, that, Pastor, we spending more time in scripture than scrolling. <laughs> Y'all know how she be acting. <laughs> I did, did I do Kira? <laughs> Ooh, there we go. Hey, Amen. That was a new. All right. Hey, Amen. No worries. I was like, okay. They're taking this stuff serious. They didn't really adamant about spending more time in God's word than on that social media. And so here's a process to develop a deeper relationship with Jesus. I just want to add to your life. If you add certain things, so if you don't have anything, adopt this. If you have something, include this. And one of the first things I want you to do is this, is accept the invitation to know Jesus more. Come on, shout, accept the invitation to know Jesus more. To know Jesus, to know Jesus, to know him more. I added more on there. Let's add it more in there. And I want you to turn to Philippians chapter 3, verse number 10 to 11. So here's an invitation. I'm, I, I, so I want you to accept this invitation that I'm giving out this morning, this afternoon, or whenever you choose to connect to this, an invitation, an invite, meaning that if nobody has ever told you you should, I want to share that today. An invite to know Jesus more. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10 and 11. I want to read it. And um, again, I'm in a series, so I may not be able to get through all of this today, but we're going to get through all of it eventually. 
because I want to make sure you gain understanding of where we are. Because I've read this many times. But every time I go back, I see more Jesus. And in verse number 10, it says it like this, y'all, from the NIV. This is my favorite uh, part of this, the way it says it here. It says, I want to know Christ. Anybody else want to know him? Somebody shout out, sh- sh- shout that with me. Say, I want to know Christ. Say it like it really means. Say, I want to know Christ. Okay, 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 I hear you. It says, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. And so, somehow, attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Now, I probably preached this at some point in life, but as I looked at this thing today, I can understand it differently based upon what I'm sharing in the context in the, of this moment, right? And Paul's desire to know Christ is an invitation to all of us as believers to accept this personal invite to know God more. Why is this so important? Because when you understand Paul's, this tent makeup from Tarsus, this background that Paul really was dealing with, because when we hear about Paul persecuting Christians, how many of y'all heard that before we were saw, before he had an encounter with Jesus, with Jesus, with Jesus on the road to Damascus? It was Jesus in the incarnate version of himself, uh, with, the, with a spiritual version of himself, encountered Paul, Saul on the road to Damascus. But the other thing, underlying understanding about this is that Paul himself, he had dual citizenship. What does that mean? He was a Jew by birth and by his right, but he also had Roman citizenship. Why was this important? Because he was able to go back and forth. He was considered a scholar and a religious leader. And so in this moment, with all of his knowledge of being a scholar, a leader in the Jewish community and uh, of dual citizenship, he thought he knew all there was about Jesus. He studied the scribes. He knew the Torah. He understood. He knew that there was a Messiah coming, but he wasn't present when he came. He was someplace else. So we hear that Jesus, this, this guy, Jesus from Nazareth, had came and died and rose again and now has ascended to heaven. He thought everybody was lying, which was the reason why he began to persecute Christians. His whole reason for persecuting Christians was because he was saying, they don't know what I know. There's no way. I wasn't there. We can't. I heard some stories, but I wasn't there. So he began to persecute Christians because he felt that those that saw Christ face to face, experienced his miracles and saw his healings and all these things were lying. And so he was actually persecuting in what he thought he knew about Jesus. So it shows you that you can have knowledge and still not know nothing. He was a teacher, one that people counted on to explain the scriptures and the scrolls. But because he had no encounter with Christ, he did not know him personally. And that's why he's at this point in verse number 10, where he realized that the life I was living and what I thought I knew was nothing compared to now that I know about Jesus and the transformative power that has taken place in my life. Somebody say amen to that. Because I don't care what you know, because I, I, I tell you, I grew up in church and I had an assumption of church, but what I did not have is a knowledge of Jesus personally. And anytime you don't have a knowledge of Jesus personally, you can walk around even as a believer thinking you're doing things right. And I tell people, you got saved, yes, that's great. Yes, you receive salvation, but you got to go through that process of sanctification where you begin to understand what now, because don't, you don't have to know what this says to be saved. 
Today, you can walk in this room, you can be connected online, and you may have never picked up this book before and hear something shared, and your heart will be convicted, and the spirit, the, 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 your person inside, that spirit inside of you will be convicted, and in your faith, you will accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Now there's an opportunity for you to begin to understand what God has to say so that you can develop a deeper relationship with him. And so many times, that's what I'm telling you, I meet believers all the time as a pastor that they assume that their moment of salvation was it for them, and they don't desire a deeper and more clear understanding. And this is what Paul was really trying to get us to understand. He said, because when you don't get to know Jesus personally, you will never experience his power in your life. And see, when I looked at this resurrection, this dead stuff that he's talking about, he, he, it, was a, it was a metaphor in a sense, is to understand not only the resurrection, but the power that literally rose Jesus from the dead. He was saying, I need to understand the spirit of God. Every believer, according to Romans chapter 8, is that when we get him in our, when we accept him in our life, that's why I tell people, you ain't got to go catch the Holy Ghost. I know we, for years we've been trying to catch him like he's been running from us. When we made Jesus Christ, you know, the, 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 what lives inside of us is the Holy Spirit, the God Spirit, the cognitive caution, the, co the conscience of God that causes us to be obedient to him regardless. Now, I've understood something here right here because knowing Jesus is more than intellectual and emotional. Amen. I, I grew up in church, right? And we, we, we didn't have church until somebody fell out. You ask for, huh? how was church today? Oh, man, it was good. What happened? Man, we shouted. That's it? You shouted and still the same. When I tore up church pews and moved chairs around, move chairs and leave here and raise hell. Like, at the same time, like, like can I say that in church? All right, I said it came out. And that was something us do. We come in this church, and if there's no transformation, and that's what Paul is trying to get us to understand, when we develop a deep, this is a process, this is part of it, and I hope I can get through some of it today, because knowing Jesus is more than intellectual and emotional, it's, it's a relational, real, and relevant experience. To have this personal relationship with God is so important. So this scripture is an invitation, like I shared earlier, to invite us into this experience that you will not ever encounter knowing anyone else. Ooh, here we go. He want to invite us into a space that you ain't going to get from your husband, from your wife, from your boo, from your whatever, He's trying to say, I'm going to get you into a space with me that you would never experience in relationship with anybody else. Transformation, restoration, rejuvenation. It invite us into this moment, and I need y'all to hear this because our desire to know Jesus brings about into our life transformative knowledge. In other words, God knows that we will never change our behavior if we never change our beliefs. He said, I need for you to believe something because I share this all the time, that your belief changes your behavior and your behavior will show the world who you truly belong to. So if there's no belief system change, there will be no behavior change because we've been acting for quite some time, but we need some believing believers. Because we got believers that can come to church but still not be believers. They say, okay, maybe God's going to do that for somebody else, but it may not ever happen for you. No, whatever you believe God for, it can happen for your life based upon whether or not you believe God can. Not by chance, not by happenstance, but do you really believe God can? And this belief will begin to change your behavior. You'll act like it's already done. You'll begin to say things like you already know God has already looked out for you in those regards because I'm always trying to do this. Anytime we think we know something and don't know God, we end up walking in self-righteousness. Now, this is the hard part because you, cause people, cause they, they start, I do this right, I do that right, I do this right, I don't do that, I ain't like them. 
Now, usually when Christians are comparing themselves, they're always talking about stuff that they don't do, that other person do. But they never, they never talk about, I pray more. I read this word. I study. They're looking at outward expressions and things to try to make themselves feel as if I'm better if I do this. But how you become better is when you develop an intimacy with God. Because what Paul was trying to say is that I know all about Jesus, but because of what I know, I've created in myself a self-righteousness when I need his righteousness. Because your righteousness is that filthy rags, the Bible declares. Like what you can do right is still, unless you understand your relationship with God, what you think you can do right does not really matter to God versus what are you really right in your heart. Are you really understanding what God is doing? Now, I understood something. I'm going to use a few words maybe to, to, to gain, gain a little better understanding because it also is relinquishing our own personal righteousness for God. This word, the technical term, is called imputation. Now, I was thinking, so it's, I am um, the opposite of amputation. Amputation is that I cut off something. Imputation means I exchange something. So what Paul was saying here was a formula, was a formula of imputation where he's saying that I know I know what I know, but I don't know Jesus the right way. And so what I got to do in order to understand the power of God, I need to exchange my thought process for the thought process of God. And if I don't do that, I can still be who I, the one thing about God is that he allows you to still be who he created you to be, but your mindset begin to change. And when you understand a mindset change, your perspective change, and now you begin to experience the God power that he's called you to understand. Because what he's saying is that I need for you to realize that with your knowledge, you're still spiritually bankrupt. And you need to start drawing from God's accounts. And that's the knowledge of God. I got to stop and say, because how many know how you was raised? You got to dismiss some of that stuff. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? I'm a, I, I remember as a boy, I used to have to lay on these stairs and call Jesus, 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 till I get him. And I just say, da, 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 da. They say, he got it. And I get up so I can go to sleep. And I walked out of there with nothing. But, I, but, 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 but when I come to the altar, what I'm looking for is an exchange with God. I'm, I got to release some of myself and say, God, what more? Because I need to know you. Because when I know more about him, man, those things that I know about myself, it said, man, those don't match. <laughs> oh, that's the attitude? <laughs> oh. That's why I tell you, you can't be a Christian and be mean. That means you haven't exchanged nothing yet. It's how I meet a Christian, a mean, nasty Christian. Because they say they're Christian. I, I, can't, I can't deny that you say that. But I'll be, I'll be correct. I say, you ain't, you ain't saved for real. Because there ain't no way that you have still, that you're still acting and feeling that way about things and people if you exchange your life for God. So knowing Jesus is to look at your life and realize that I'm nothing without him. I need to exchange something because here it is, to know Jesus is to know the power, somebody shout the power of his resurrection. Now I've seen this scripture a million different times, but it says to know God. Bring, you bring number 10 up again. I want to read it for y'all can see it. It says, I want to know Christ. Yes, 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 to know. This is what the knowledge brings. So when I want to know Christ, one of the things that God presents to us is that you need to know the power of his resurrection. Hmm. What is that? When you ask yourself the power, and see, when we say resurrection, we only reference most of the time in our mind when Jesus got up from the grave. But that, but th that word was not made up when Jesus rolled from the dead. It was first was they saw it never done before, but the word exists for us to understand 
that what God is trying to get us to understand through the text today is that he wants us to know the power of his resurrection. You see, the resurrection isn't just raising, it's also a restoration of life. So it's not just raising of a life, it's taking a life that exists already and restoring it. I mean, I can tell you, man, I, I was, I, I'm the same physical person that I was before I knew Jesus. But there was a restoration and a transformation that took place is that God took the same entity, the same person, and just transformed their thinking. And then the ways begin. Every time I see a person and they give their life to Jesus, I'm so grateful for the transformation of the mindset that's taking place because what happened is that it's a resurrection from your dead self. How do I know that? Because your sins was leading you to what? Death. When you was in your sin... Or if you're in your sin, you was or you are a dead man or woman walking. So it shows that when I know Jesus, I then begin to come out of the life that is killing me. Okay, y'all, okay, y'all. To know Jesus is to know you can't still keep living that dead life. That life that leads to destruction. I tell y'all last week, I don't care if you keep coming to church. If you don't exchange your life for Jesus, you just had a, a moment. And I, I grew up with good church, but no transformation. And so there has to be an exchange. He said, I, so when I know Jesus, I know the power that he brings upon my life to change who I am. So I, be, I stop living lawlessly and start living consciously, thinking about God in my conversations, in my ways. It leads to us understanding and experiencing the transformative power that, that God gives to bring us out of our dead lives. Amen to that, somebody. Because I was sinking deep. Hey, psh. anybody was a good sinner? Okay, you ain't got to tell me. You ain't got to raise your hand with me. I raised it by myself. <laughs> it, 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 you, 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 you ain't got nothing to get it going. They call on you. You can get the, you, Some of y'all were party starters. And you done got saved and shut up. Now we got to get you cranked up in church. You used to be walking in the club like, hey, I'm here. <laughs> oh, I'm going to trip. I'm tripping. <laughs> but now it's like, did you not exchange that old life for a new one? Because when we live in sin, somebody shout sin. Sin is real. It's a rebellion against God. Because we do have saints with sinners' problems. It's a rebellion against, anytime you rebel against God's word, it shows that you don't know me. And I, we've all lived in that place. I'm, trying, this, I'm telling you, this is, this is how we develop deeper relationships because anytime we live in rebellion against God's command, we begin to see that we are dead men that is in desperate need of saving because as a believer, the resurrection also signifies victory. Somebody shout victory. The things that used to get you caught up, they don't have to keep you caught up. Amen to that somebody. What caught you up don't have to keep you caught up. You have power to get out of it. Because it feels like suffering when you got to give up that relationship that isn't godly. I gotta be by myself. Amen. <laughs> That's suffering. But are you willing to go through that to show the power of God over your life? Your victory over that situation? I'm talking to men and women alike, right? We got victory. Paul was trying to say, you, or, or, or you may be just a person that think you know it all. And not willing to accept what God really has for you. But this is why I know to be true. I'm a realist. Y'all know realists? God don't know what I'm going through. God knows everything you're going through. 
He knows your end at your beginning. And sometimes even in that moment, we can rebel against God's knowledge over our life. To say his will is my will. And what I understood about knowing God is that you'll begin to easily recognize relationships, environments, and invitations that could compromise your relationship with Jesus. You know what I realized as a, a believer that understood and know God more? That I don't have to accept every invitation. Amen. I know you're just trying to be cool with everybody, but everybody ain't worth being cool with. All right. I'm going to have some young folks here and some older ones too. I used to think that I have to be in everywhere, everywhere that makes it for, for, for folks to think I'm a Christian. I ain't got to be everywhere. But there's some environments that are compromise your Christianity. Like there's some people you can hang with. I know you're just trying to be cool with everybody, but you know they messy. Oh, you know it. And, and, and you rolling with them. <laughs> you think you're going to be seen different? You hanging with messy people. So you messy somewhere. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying that to me. See, when, when you know God, you'll start saying, hold on for a second. Amen. You, you can't, I can't even be around you. Because you, I, I know Jesus. And there's certain things that I know about him that I can't go back to that. Because that'll bring, that'll suck you. Because I wish 24 bad apples made one good. I wish it did. But it said, how many apples does it take to destroy a whole bunch? You got to remove that thing out of your life. And the resurrection gives you the ability to remove those things that will separate you from God. That's the power. That's the strength. When you don't feel like you got the strength to make that hard, because so, sometimes, man, it's hard to tell somebody you really like and love. Amen. That person you've been, Jesus. I'll be trying, y'all. I'll be trying to tell them, man, you know what? We're going to wait till we get married. Amen. I tell them fellas all the time, you got to have a license and have a dog. If you ain't married her yet, okay. All right. Um, I, I tell ladies all the time, stop giving your favor away for free. Amen. Amen. Stop. That takes power of God to do that, to overcome this flesh. Okay, I'm talking to say, y'all, y'all saved. To overcome this thing here? Yeah. Nobody but his power can do it. Yeah. But when you know him, it'll give you power over your own will, your own desires. Because you're daily making exchanges. It's a bank account. It's a drawing from and the deposit. I deposit my time. I draw strength. I deposit my will and I get his ways. Amen. I deposit prayer and I get answers. That's why it's an imputation. That's what it really brings about. Because, see, this is what the enemy wants and why he wants to interrupt your resurrection. Oh, my God. See, if you look at the scripture, when you understand the context of the resurrection, there was people trying to interrupt it. There was things that even Peter was trying. That's why Jesus had to tell him, get the hints behind me, Satan. You're trying to say stuff that's going to keep me from fulfilling this purpose. And I thought about even in our own personal resurrected lives that the enemy is always trying to interrupt our resurrection. Why? Because he knows that not only do you get rid of bad stuff in your life, that whatever is good in your life, you become better at it. See, one thing about the resurrected life is that you get rid of the bad stuff, but the good stuff in you become greater. And he know that, boy, you're going to be a threat, boy, if you ever give your Think about it, boy. When you gave your life to Jesus, all of a sudden, your good qualities begin to be better. Because he knows that if you, if you keep holding that old stuff, it's going to ruin the good stuff in you. It says the dead, the desolate, the things that disturb and disrupt God's purpose in my life. Amen? 
I'm going to leave y'all with this because I can't go no further because I know I'm already out of time, but y'all gave me some time to preach because the worship was gone for a long time, so. <laughs> Amen. Can I tell you, can, can I give you one more point real quick? You know, in order to develop this deeper relationship, we got to acknowledge and experience his Holy Spirit. Like, like you, you, you don't just experience Holy Spirit, you also have to acknowledge Holy Spirit. This is not just an encounter, it's a life of constant correction and conviction to follow God's ways. So when I know Christ and the power, I begin to walk in the understanding and acknowledgement and experience Holy Spirit. I was reading John 14, I'm gonna leave you with this because uh, I wanna share this uh, in this context and we'll pick back up. Like I said, we're here for a while. John 14, verse 16 and 17. Man, this is, this is why I want to know Jesus. This, this is totally connected to this. In verse 16, it says, Jesus, and I will ask the Father. This is Jesus talking. So right before this, he talks about, if you look at the Bible, I think right before this verse, it says, if you love me, keep my commandments. If, somebody say if. Y'all know if was a fifth. Okay. All right, no, but if, that's the biggest two-letter word in the Bible. That's why even in uh, 2 Chronicles where it's talking about if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, says what? Then, see, if always brings about God's condition in our lives. Because he don't know, yeah, he's all knowing, but he can't make you do nothing. He can't make you keep his commands. He said, but if you love me, if you love me, you will keep my commands. And then verse number 17 says, and I will. Verse 16, I'm sorry. Verse 16, it says, and I will ask the Father. This is important, y'all. And he will give you another advocate to help you. This is Holy Spirit. And he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you how long? Forever. So this, is, this, is, this ain't a day-to-day. -day. You ain't going to catch the Holy Ghost on Sunday. No, his desire is to be with you Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m. calls, 5 a.m., 6 a.m., whatever you at. It says, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you, a, another, give you another advocate. This is important. This is upon Jesus preparing for his departure. He says, you're not going to be without me. There's a part of me that will be with you that was with me. Because he was saying, this is what was in me that kept me on my mission. He says, now I'm about to give you an advocate, another one besides me, that will help you and will be with you forever. It's called the spirit of truth. And anytime I see this word spirit of truth, it lets me know that there's a spirit of lies out there. I've been lying on I don't. I like that boy. I think that thing was it. I'm like, boy. If, some of y'all had that thing in your heart, but you're like, yes, I have. I've been lying on talking about mystery. Oh, boy. Because anytime there's a spirit of truth, there's a big spirit of lies out there. They're trying to tell you. That's why I tell people that anytime there's something biblical, they try to make it political. They try to take truths and brain lie. This says marriage is between man and a woman. The world says a lie. They say you can marry anybody. That's a lie. Okay. See, we, I ain't here to, I'm here to, Jesus, come on. Okay, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him. Look. It don't say the world won't. It said the world can't. That thing messed me up right there, boy. It's not that they won't. It's like they can't. If they don't know Jesus, they can't. It ain't gonna happen. So we're trying to change people instead of saying, here's Jesus. But hold on, before I try to change you, let me, do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? I had people tell me, well, Pastor, you know, you, you, you said this. And I said, I, I, I said, well, you, I said, hold on, don't put that on me so you can get mad at me. Tell me, based upon your relationship with Jesus, 
Based upon what you know your relationship, can you still serve him and do that? Uh, and most of them say, but Pastor, you're right. I, I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm, I'm talking about anything. I'm, 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 I'm putting this as a broad statement. And a lot of times in our life, we, and I, we all been guilty. That's what I'm saying. This is a deeper, not surface. He says, you, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him or what? I ain't said that loud enough. It neither sees him or what? They can't because they don't know. It doesn't mean that we're not saying it. It doesn't mean that I'm not preaching it to us right now. All of I'm talking about us. But you know him. Somebody can tell say, but you know him. At least you say you do. For he lives in you, for he lives with you, and he will and will be in you. I like that. It says, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I want to just kind of pause because I know I'm out of time. I'm, I'm way out of time. But um, when I saw this, I want to just leave you with this because I'm going I'm to I'm bring this up next week. Um, is that It says, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate. Right here? It just confirmed something in me, and I hope I can confirm it with you. I'm looking for the Jesus advocate, not the devil's advocate. Amen. I know some of y'all like to play them. Amen. Stay around from people that say, I play the devil's advocate. Well, you can keep going playing with the devil there. I need a Jesus advocate. Y'all know y'all got, it, it, I mean, I had, I had, I had Christians, say, I'd, be, I'd have been in meetings where people said, I'm the pain of the devil's advocate. I said, well, get out of here, devil. <laughs> Just the hints behind me. Oh, because you're only thing you, you're not going to advocate for the things of Christ. Every time the devil advocate shows up in your conversation, they always trying to get you to do something that they want you to keep on doing. They're going to keep you farther away from Jesus.